You know, the Lord has been taking us on this um, revelation in the area of identity. And um, we've been, you know, we, we went on a trip to Jerusalem and we, we wanted to come back and begin to share some of pictures and share some certain things. And, and the Lord just keeps telling me, not yet, not yet. And I really didn't understand until yesterday why. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if, you might not know why yet, but if you wait, God will reveal to you. In Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 30, <clears throat> would you all read that with me, please? For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a what? Great mystery. It's a great mystery. In other words, a mystery. Something that's been hidden. Now Paul got this mystery because he prayed in the Spirit. It's called tongues. And God revealed the revelation to him by praying in the Spirit. Because when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are three-dimensional. If you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're only one-dimensional. Is everybody with me? And in this, you are able to go to the deeper things of God. And it says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. In other words, he was using the example of marriage in the natural realm. But he was actually speaking of the mystery between Christ and the church, and the church being the body of Christ, about a marriage. He said, nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife, as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. In this we see that there is a union between husband and wife which is oneness and there is be respect and love. And that is the mystery because what was manifested here in the natural realm is representing the things in the spirit realm. Is everybody okay? In other words, we are the members of his body. That is the church. The church is ecclesiastic meaning called out ones called out ones. So the church is the called out ones. Amen? And, and, and it says, and a man should leave his mother or brother or father and mother and be joined to his wife. Now, understand this. In that word man, it means mankind shall leave his mother and father and be joined. To the wife, the bride. Who is the bride? Who is the wife? The body of Christ. Amen? So in other words, there's an individualism where we must leave our natural realm of mother and father and be joined into the body of Christ known as the bride of Christ, the wife. It is a mystery. It is created by God Almighty. Amen? So we see that joined to the wife in, is in one flesh. The mystery is a created being, the natural, in the natural realm to be joined with the Lord spiritually. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? Good. 1 Corinthians 6. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 14. Everybody there? Let's read it. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall that I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Now I want you to know that the world is considered the harlot. In fact, in the book of Revelations, it talks about how the harlot caused people to drink the drink of delusion and lust and so forth. In verse 17, 
But he who is joined to the Lord is what? One Spirit with Him. One Spirit with Him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your, God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we are joined to the Lord. We are one in spirit. Again, individually, each one of us must be joined to the body of Christ. And then the body of Christ is going to be married with God in marriage and become one. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. I'll start at 7. Hallelujah. Read it with me, please. Uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? Life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. In other words, God prepared a place. That's just confirmation. Huh? <laughs> God prepared a place, didn't he? Amen? And God is preparing a place for me and you. So a place was prepared for the man who was in his image and likeness. Hello? But we weren't born in His image and likeness. We were born in the image and likeness of darkness. That's why you must be born again. But Adam was born in the image and likeness of God. And for that, God prepared a place for him. Because he was in His image. Amen? Now, He's not going to prepare a place for somebody who's not in His image and likeness. Amen. There's another place. Hallelujah. Go to verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Now I want you to know the same place that, the, that God removed the rib from Adam is the same place where Jesus was pierced in the side. And producing the bride of Christ. And here, Adam, God was going to produce Adam's wife. Because the Old Testament is a shadow of things to come. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man, and Adam fainted. Oh, no. <laughs> and Adam said, is... This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, again, a man shall leave his father and mother. Well, who was Adam's father and mother? God. And be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Hallelujah. So, again, God prepared a place for somebody who is in his image and likeness individually and remember individually we must be first joined to the Lord now Adam was sent from God amen to be joined with a woman actually the woman came from him now we know that Adam fell didn't he and so did Eve and in that things changed so there was no more an image and likeness of God it was the image and likeness of the serpent because man now knew good and evil. Is everybody okay? So again, I want to share with you that there must be individually, 